Well, good evening, everybody. I'm David Paul, KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist with your Tuesday evening Atlantic Tropical Update on this August 31st. Where did August go? September 1st starts tomorrow and it will stay busy in the Atlantic, but we have to begin with what's happening in the aftermath of Ida making landfall in southeast Louisiana. As you probably know, New Orleans has no power and the heat is now building. Not only that, the ground is saturated, so the humidity levels, soil moisture content is incredibly high. That's not going anywhere. So folks here across southeast Louisiana without power, in particular, most of the city of New Orleans without power, are really going to be struggling in the heat and humidity for the next several days. And it has really everything to do with what's going on at the upper level. So these are the winds uh, flowing at 500 millibars. That's about 18,000 feet up in the atmosphere. This is where they sit on Tuesday. And Tuesday was a hot day in Louisiana. Highs were in the low to mid 90s. We had heat indexes in the New Orleans area today at or above 110 degrees. That's what it felt like. And that is going to continue and it may get worse. That is because look what forms. That's a ridge of high pressure. What you've got is a clockwise flowing mountain of air that will be centered over Arkansas, southern Arkansas, with Louisiana and southern Louisiana squarely under its influence. So what happens under these conditions is you get sinking air, takes the clouds out of the atmosphere, that sinking air compresses as it pushes against the surface. That's something called compression heating. And so morning lows will be near 80, so no relief overnight. Afternoon highs, 92, 93, 94, 95 are likely across the state of Louisiana, including New Orleans, including Slidell. Uh, and heat index values with the high humidity and the soil moisture content being so high, 105 to 110 plus. I saw heat indexes today in that area, 111 and 112 at times. And so they need all the help that they can get with water and any type of generation that can generate a fan or some sort of air conditioning, some sort of relief. And rain will continue. Now this is the radar loop uh, over the past 12 hours and we had lots of scattered showers and thunderstorms across uh, southern Louisiana today. Had a flash flood warning at one point for the New Orleans area proper. That's now come to an end, but there'll also be a slight chance for a scattered thunderstorm. But in those type of conditions, if you get an isolated thunderstorm, it really just makes the humidity that much worse. It's difficult to get any type of relief. Big picture. Uh, couple of things. You can see all the rain coming into the desert southwest. That's from a decaying piece of tropical moisture that's come across Mexico into Arizona. It's raining in the desert on this Tuesday evening. And then our special feature continues to be the remnant circulation of what was at one point Hurricane Ida. Now a remnant circulation, a tropical low. Uh, but Ida has a tremendous amount of moisture with it. These storms are notorious for bringing the Atlantic Ocean with them and then just bringing that moisture inland and some of the worst floods that we've ever seen across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest, the mid Atlantic states, New York and Boston and New England have come from decaying tropical systems like Ida as they came out of the Gulf and moved northward and sometimes slowed down and Ida what there is of it's moving very slowly this evening only drifting at about five to eight miles an hour. Rainfall forecast for the Northeast is concerning. Take any flash flood watches, warnings, advisories that you get across the Virginias, into Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New England. Take them seriously as this is a significant flash flood threat. This is going to go into Wednesday night, Thursday, and probably won't end until Friday, sometime on Friday. And there are two players involved. So remember, this is a surface-based system. Ida, these tropical lows are tropical, are, are surface-based low pressure systems. So you've got all this moisture coming in at low and mid levels with the remnant circulation of Ida. But there's another player involved that is concerning. It's what's going on at the upper level winds. Now this is the upper level wind flow, not at 18,000 feet, but way up at 34,000 feet, 250 millibars. So today we've got the jet stream flowing west to east. It's fairly zonal. There's a little bit of a trough troughs create lift. Watch what happens as we move forward in time and we go into Wednesday evening. We get a significant trough, a dip in those upper level winds. Uh, the lee of the trough begins to develop as we head through the Virginias and then reaches up across 
Pennsylvania into New York. So you get on the leeward side, the downwind side of the trough axis, that's where the lift is going to be. You put a, tr a trough like this, a jet stream pattern with a dip like that in the vicinity of all that moisture, and what happens is you get an acceleration at the upper level wind. So as you'll notice, the, the jet stream not only dips, but as it moves through Pennsylvania and exits Pennsylvania into New York, it accelerates. That's what those brighter colors are. That's the faster moving air. And what that does is as that, as that air accelerates, it accelerates, it creates a space. It creates a vacuum way up there at 34,000 feet, right in that area where it's accelerating. It's like spreading your fingers apart. There's empty space in there, empty space is a vacuum. So what you've got is chunks of empty space up at 34,000 feet, that creates lift, and that can help to wring out all the available moisture in the atmosphere along with the orographic lifting that may also go on with the Poconos and the Alleghenies in here. So there are several factors in play that could create a significant flash flood that as we head into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday across the Virginias, Pennsylvania, New York, all of New England, New Jersey as well. Okay, tropics. So Ida over the United States. Kate, this is 12 now, TD12. That's likely to become Larry. And then we've got this spot in the Caribbean, which is very disorganized this evening, but it's got a 20% chance we'll take a look at it. Kate is in the process of falling apart, barely hanging on to tropical depression status, pressures at 1,007 millibars. The higher that number goes, the weaker the system gets. And what there is of this is going to drift north and fall apart over the next couple of days. So we'll be saying goodbye to Kate uh, over the next oh, 36, 48 hours, likely to see it dissipate. This spot in the Western Caribbean is really not much of a spot at all. We've had a few scattered thunderstorms uh, north of Panama, Southwest Caribbean today. 20% chance here the next five days. Let's look at the computer models on this. And in fact, they do, I say they, the Euro does try to close off a little low here uh, just to the east of Honduras as we head into to Wednesday night. However, what there is of this, if it's even able to form a little low, moves into Nicaragua and Honduras and then just fizzles out. Now, it does bring a lot of moisture and rain into Central America, Southern Mexico, but nothing that redevelops here in the Southern Gulf of Mexico, at least that doesn't appear to be very likely. So at the moment, what's trying to develop here in the Southwest Caribbean Sea is a rainmaker more than anything else for Central America. This one's a little more interesting. This is TD12, west coast of Africa. Wave came off uh, a couple of days ago, and now you can see it's, it's flaring up. That's a good cluster of, of convection near what looks to be a developing center of our tropical depression. Pressure's 1,006, moving uh, west at 16 miles an hour. This is very likely to become Larry in short order. We look at the GFS and the American models together, and they're in agreement that not only does this move west and west-northwest, but both the GFS and the Euro turn this into a pretty strong hurricane as we head into the middle of the week and into the weekend and then going into Sunday and early next week we've got a hurricane out here both of the models in fairly good agreement therefore you'll see as we look at the forecast cone from the hurricane center it is very much following the year on the GFS to not only get a cat one Larry but a cat two Larry winds of 105 going into the end of the weekend Sunday however bigger picture you know that is still what are we, 1,800, 2,000 miles away or so from the east coast of the United States at that point. So at the moment, this may develop into a strong hurricane, but it's no significant threat to the United States. And at this latitude, it, is, it gets very difficult for it to get pushed back down like into the Caribbean or, or toward the Bahamas. So I'm cautiously optimistic that what I think will end up being Larry will also end up as a fish storm as we talked about earlier, these troughs are beginning to come off the East Coast with a little more frequency. We're, turn, we're going into meteorological fall starting uh, on, on Wednesday. It's September the 1st. That's the beginning of meteorological fall. And it becomes more likely that these uh, middle of the Atlantic storms get pulled northward by the troughs that begin to exit the East Coast as we begin to change seasons. Uh, questions or comments? Trust me, I'm on social media. David Paul, K-H-O-U. Hit me up. We'll see you tomorrow for another update.